The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, has made a donation of 15 million naira to victims of flooding in Bayelsa State. At least 10 people have died and over 700 have been displaced in the state. Atiku has pledged to build the required flood management infrastructure in key locations in the Niger and Benue basins as well as the dredging of the rivers and estuaries to prevent flooding in the Niger Delta area. All right, joining us now for these issues tonight, uh, we have Dr. Sam um, Madi. Uh, Dr. Sam, good to see you. All right, let's uh, unravel these political uh, developments. Uh, Tiku visits uh, Bayelsa State, of course, to uh, show support and uh, sympathy for uh, victims of flooding, not only in Bayelsa, of course, uh, but in other parts of the country. Uh, what do you make of this and the donation of 15 million naira? Uh, recall last week, there was some talk that this whole flooding issue has been politicized. Well, I think it ought to be politicized. I mean, this election period and a major calamity should form part of campaigning, not just in the cynical sense, but look, candidates will have to use opportunity to show their commitment, the human side of their, that they have, and of course the understanding of the crisis, and again use it to appeal to voters. Essentially, presidents are presidents in terms of crisis, in terms of you know, when it's good, when it's bad. And oftentimes, it's when it's bad that you know, people want to see a sense of whether the president will be a chief mourner, a mourner in chief, will be the, the, the man who will rebuild hope and confidence. So uh, there's nothing wrong in candidates, you know, taking opportunity to see that this is really bigger than we think. This is about, you know, last week was alone over 113.3 kilometers in Kogi alone covered by sea, mm. by water. If about 600 or more people have died, about 2.5 million affected and 1.4, uh, you know, um, displaced. So basically, this is this is actually a national crisis, and there's nothing wrong in candidates. Both use it to advance their campaign in the sense of putting themselves as the right person who empathizes, who understands these dynamics, and who is best prepared to mitigate, prevent, and build resilience next time around. So I, I think it's good. The critical issue is will this visit afford them the, the kind of engagement they need with the victims, with uh, the communities, and uh, with local leadership to better understand both the contextual costs and, of course, the, mm. the general costs. Uh, we, we don't want it to be like attending a banquet in government house and you know, speaking to a few, a few journalists. You have to really engage with the community, see for yourself the, the, the damage, and then build up <coughs> material for manifesto of policy when you become president. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we are told we have our politics editor, Somna Sambo, joining this chat at this time. Thank mm. you so much, Somna, for your time, as always. Uh, let me ask you the same question. Are we seeing the front runners milking this situation of flooding across Nigeria? I think we've seen Peter Obi, who said he's suspending his campaigns uh, to emphasize. We've seen donations of monies from uh, Peter Obi, uh, Tinubu of the APC, and of course, Atiku of the PDP. What do you make of this whole situation? Thank you, Adeswa. It's the right thing to do. I mean, if they don't milk this situation, then I wonder who they would want to serve. They are all out there seeking for votes from everyone, whether the person is affected by floods or not. As long as it's Nigerian citizens um, that they are seeking votes from, I think uh, what they are doing is right. Uh, and it's so sad to see that uh, the federal government actually hasn't uh, been able to uh, provide the sort of leadership that's needed uh, in this time of uh, floods across the country. I mean, you see President Mohamed Bouhari traveling out of the country when he has been receiving, you know, uh, 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 support uh, from other countries. And uh, so it makes you want to wonder what the APC-led federal government under President Bouhari is doing about this flood situation. Are they underrating uh, the flood uh, situation in the country? And I'm even thinking that uh, uh, the you know, opposition political parties have been very lenient with the APC-led federal administration because in other countries, I mean, President Buhari will be under heat uh, for, for what we are seeing, for leaving his people and traveling to South Korea. What's so important about that South Korea summit that Buhari cannot stay back? Uh, is he being shown the visuals of what's going on across the country? 
Well, we must commend the likes of uh, Peter Obi and uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar for, you know, getting their boots on the ground, uh, I mean, meeting with people who ought to be met with, and that we are surprised that the presidential candidate of the APC2 is not visiting people. I mean, we've seen his wife visiting, but what's happening to Tinubu as a person? We need to see him empathizing with Nigerians. This is no time for politics. If our military can be brought out of the barracks and put on, I mean, these riverine areas to support everyone who's, uh, uh, you know, affected by the floods, then, I mean, what, what are the uh, politicians from the ruling parties doing, both those in government and out of government? The APC at this point in time needs to be told that this is not how governance should be, uh, you know, performed. This is not what it means to be in government. Uh, there's, a, 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 there's no empathy from the APC left federal administration. You, you recall that the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs was addressing Nigerians on these same flood issues right inside an office, instead of being right there with, uh, you know, the flood victims. This is the time to actually call the APC out. This is not how to be in government. It's good to see that the opposition politicians are doing the best that they can to provide succor for Nigerians. Ah, Somna Sambo, thank you very much for that. Uh, Dr. Sabamati, you, you, you want to uh, say anything about that particular point mm -hmm. that's been made? I recall uh, Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka made, you know, in one article he said the, the absence of empathy in governance. Uh, what Somna said mm -hmm. there... But clearly, I mean, we're not surprised uh, it's for the past seven to eight years, this government has been notable for its lack of empathy. Basically, really don't care much about the people. So it's, I think it's now too late to flog a dead horse. Mm. The president didn't care when he, was, he had to run, when he was the first term in office, and he wouldn't care at all, now that he's the last, you know, he's not electable at all. So I think the scorecard of Premier is very clear, it's failure. There's nothing to begrudge him, he doesn't care much. Otherwise, I mean, he's given nine, 90 days for the ministers to take an action. 90 mm. days, every minute people are dying or people are risking losing. Baeza basically seemed to be, you know, I had, so had my assistant was on the road for two days. He, he came back totally broken. People have lost their livelihood, certificates have lost everything. I think the politicians or the opposition parties are kind of constrained here. Uh, the president is not on the ballot. I think the focus now will be what is the APC presidential uh, candidate going to do? Uh, we know that he has given about 100 million, I think, to Kano. I don't know how much Kano is affected, but I know that about 33 states are mm. affected one way or the other. But again, the question is if you're not out there visiting, I mean, look at playback US elsewhere with a Shell or ExxonMobil spill. The governor of the state, the president, has to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, going there is shows three things, like someone says. One is empathy, which is the, the heart of governance. <coughs> the second one is, look, a demonstration of readiness to get first-hand information. You don't just read books and literature and get to know how people are suffering. Mm -hmm. You just have to be front line with them, take you know, uh, messaging from the local leaders, talk to them, and see for yourself, right. even how complicated the tributes are. You're going to go there with maybe the Minister of Environment, yeah. the Minister of Humanitarian <coughs> Services. This is what is missing. So I think that what they have done so far is probably taken for granted. There's no basis quarrel with President Buhari. He just doesn't care and wouldn't care. Well, the irony is that just today in South Korea, the president was speaking with former UN scribe Ban Ki-moon, mm -hmm. and he told him that Nigeria is already feeling the effects of climate, climate change, change with the flooding in the country. Some days ago, the president also gave a 90-day ultimatum to his ministers and state governors to come up with a plan. But gentlemen, let's move on. There are so other developing issues. political stories. River State, Sumna Sambo. Can I say River State APC again? Mm -hmm. What do you make of that situation? It's such a very sad uh, development for the All Progressives Congress in River State. And I'm wondering the sort of uh, politician that uh, Ruti Miyamichi is. Uh, because this shows that he hasn't been able to apply all the skills that he has learned within the Nigerian polity. How can the same thing happen to him twice in River State? Being the political leader of the APC in River State, how could the same thing be happening again, just like it happened uh, in the 2019 general election. Well, how about the resources that, that have been put in by uh, senatorial candidates, by House of Representatives candidates, state uh, uh, assembly members, all these people who are buying forms and all of that, engaging in one form of campaign, 
only for their, 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 their candidacy to be quashed by the courts just because some people are behaving in high-handed ways and not you know, uh, uh, providing you know, clear ground for, for democracy to work. And that's uh, the issue we've been talking about, issues of internal democracy. If the governing party cannot show example as states, then there's a very big problem. And the courts have shown clearly, and they are still affirming themselves, that once the political parties don't behave in accordance to the tenets of democracy, of course, the rule of law will always prevail. It's the rule of law that we are seeing prevailing. When people go to use their hard-earned resources to buy forms to run for political offices, and just because you think that you have some Abuja connections, you exclude them from taking part in, in party primaries, what, what do you expect? This is the result of high-handedness. And of course, it can, it's attributable to the overwhelming influence of uh, the, the former Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, the decision to impose certain number of people on others without allowing party democracy to play out is the result that we are seeing. And it's not different from even the PDP. See what's happening in uh, Wiki's PDP in River State. This has always been the, the issue. In River State, the rule of law is not allowed to play out in uh, the internal politics of political parties. The issue of imposition keeps going on. And that's why sometimes when you see Nigerians focusing at the parties at the federal level, you wonder why they are not interested in what's going on in their states. Unless we reform the political processes in the states and right. local governments, we cannot continue to accuse federal politicians alone of not obeying mm. the rule of law. Okay, so uh, Dr. Sabamadi, it looks like it's deja vu all, you know, all over again in uh, River State. But is this really an Amechi, Rotimi Amechi uh, matter or is, you know, beyond uh, Rotimi Amechi? And does this speak to the absence really of internal, uh, you know, democracy, democracy within uh, the parties? Well, and then you, yeah. you see it reflecting in the overall, mm -hmm. you know, picture. Absolutely. I think three factors. One, of course, River State is a, a mini Nigeria. You know, we talk about dodge disease, the perverse incentive of, of, of oil resource where you have money. And so rivers epitomizes that crisis, you know, big money and then recklessness follows big money. So, of course, all Nigerian political parties lack internal democracy, but there, there's an element of recklessness when you push it too far. And so we've seen the same thing happened twice now. And the question is, why rivers? Of course, you talked about PDP, where we can basically doesn't give a hoot about rule of law, impose his governor, put in prison or jailed uh, an, an aspirant. And we've seen all the going on. So the question is, first, internal democracy in the parties. And that's what the Electoral Act has tried to constrain a little bit. INEC has also tried to constrain a little bit with their firmness with regards to um, uh, report of primaries. Mm -hmm. But the big picture here is that you have to couple a mentality of democracy, the rule of law. You see, when you have a lot of money coming from, you know, just money slush, you know, you're not tasking the people, you're not making investment, you are simply collecting rent from federal government every year or every month. You get this notion that you could actually do anything. And so I think the problem with rivers from the time of Mwike to Amechi right now shows basically that rivers is Nigeria writ large, or the micro Nigeria, which is a state that does not understand restaurant law, lawfulness because there's a possibility they can do everything. I mean, why would this happen twice? And I think we might wait for the Supreme Court. We're going to get to see perhaps some of these uh, candidates now being real candidates on the last day. Why is mm. this so? The Electoral Act is very clear now. You know, the, the days of saying parties decide what they want is over. There are clear processes that the, the law has, you know, mandated they must go through to get become a candidate. Right. If you don't go through those processes, it doesn't matter whether it's all the candidates. We've seen the news from the north, uh, one of the states, I think uh, one of the states that had a problem, I think it's um, uh, Adamawa, Adamawa, APC, yeah. mm -hmm. that it has a, a, a shocker. Uh, well, there's still quite a people sprinkle, but I guess if this good judgment stands, it will be both a personal disgrace to the leaders of APC in River State, mm -hmm. that in two electoral circles, their greed and recklessness has made their party a fighting chance to try to upstage the PDP. Uh, and, it, and maybe this is hallelujah to Wike. In spite of bringing, imposing a candidate who is not strong, who is a new fight, he's probably going to have a smooth rail, you know, right to, 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 to have his candidate uh, Sumner, in the election. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Samna, I mean, we're talking about internal democracy here. Some will also say the judiciary completing our electoral processes is the reason we have 
our off-season elections in some states. INEC has just released a timetable now for Imo, Kogi, and Bayosa. Uh, what do you say of that? Would you say uh, we have learned any lessons at all? Are we likely to see more of this happening? We are likely to see more of this happening because Nigerian politicians don't learn except to use force. And that's why, if you read the judgment of uh, Justice uh, uh, Chinwendu Mwogu of the Federal High Court in uh, 2018 on this same River State case, he said it was a case of rule by might. Politicians who think because they have uh, uh, support from Abuja, they have federal might, as it's usually called, they can bamboozle people here and there and push anybody that they feel like pushing out without following the procedures, need to know that it will definitely catch up with them. Yes, this same issue has not ended with this judgment today. Uh, like it happened in 2018, it's going to be appealed way up onto the uh, uh, Supreme Court. But think of all the resources that have been wasted. I'm thinking of that State House of Assembly member, that state, that House of Representative uh, 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 can candidate that has spent all his monies, you know, to emerge and all of that, and only uh, it will be left in the lodge. That senatorial candidate that has spent all his resources, and the governorship candidates too, Tonya Cole. Of course, you know that it, it won't be funny that having been nominated twice, you didn't participate in the election. This will keep happening and we'll keep having this off-season election. While it's good for us to actually have staggered elections as a result of this, uh, not deliberate action, nonetheless, it says a lot about the sort of politics that we play. And this is not an APC thing alone. It's happening both in the PDP and even Labour Party. You're going to see lots of things happening if Labour Party comes out to get one or two states. Because until these in issues of internal democracies are resolved and we do not go by what Justice uh, Chiwendu said uh, uh, of uh, rule by might by certain politicians in top political parties, then we'll continue to be in this problem. It's time for us to learn. And if we don't learn, it will keep on catching with us. Or is it the courts to the rescue, the judiciary to the rescue by the long term? How will this fix our democracy? How can our democracy grow? Uh, Dr. Sam uh, Amadi. Yeah, I mean, look, we are all complaining about judicializing politics. You know, the courts <coughs> don't have to pick winners. The people have to choose. We saw what happened in Rivers again with Amechi as governor, where when uh, he, the court judged that he ought to be the candidate, and without being voted for his first time, Amechi became the governor through a very ridiculous, you know, terrible judgment that the Supreme Court is not part of up to today. And so that's what we get. Whenever the court is forced by a terrible misbehavior of politicians to take over the process and determine winners, democracy suffers. The notion of democracy is actually the court will probably defer to the politicians. But that can only happen when the courts are convinced politicians are playing by their rules. So we want to really get the courts off ele elections as much as possible. But that can't happen until there's a safe regulation. We are party chairman, and we saw what happened this primary. The parties, they are colluding with candidates. Party leadership colluding with candidates, governors. We saw that with uh, Ebony. We saw that in uh, a place like Akwaibom, where it looks like as if the party leaders, instead of being an arbiter, a regulator, the design of the party process, that the party structure itself self-regulates by ensuring that the right rules are followed. So the court defer to party because the court can't intervene. The court says, you know what? They have gone through their process. We can't choose their winner. But when these party leaders break the rules, defer to the strong man themselves, and fail the self-regulation test, the court steps in, and that's not good for democracy. We want to see less of judicial intervention because that's when democracy becomes robust. If the courts will be speaking and reading through and counting votes and deciding who win and who didn't win, then you're not already a democracy because the courts themselves, judges, are not accountable. They're not elected. They need to move away from the political space and deal with purely judicial issue. But if the politicians, chairman of parties and their NWCs continue to be reckless and irresponsible, in deferring to powerful <coughs> governors or powerful people, ministers, then the courts will be inserting the itself and the court will ruin democracy because the court has to determine issues on their merits. It reminds me of what the CJN, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, said after his swearing in, uh, politicians should allow the judiciary work, work optimally. And, you know, people have argued that perhaps the the judiciary should also let the politicians be. But Sumner Sambo, I hear both of you talk about the supremacy of political parties in Nigeria and why we have this lack of internal democracy.
democracy. But you mentioned Labour Party, which some people will say is fairly new to the big game because of the candidate it has at the moment. So is it really about the political parties about, or about the big men? And is it time we start considering independent candidacy? Will that fix all of this problem or some of it? Yeah, I mean, the issue of independent candidacy, it's a very good one you've raised, uh, 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 Adesua. Uh, if you recall, prior to, uh, before the uh, uh, 1959 elections, and of course, when we got into independence, we had always had that provision for independent candidacy until eventually, you know, the big men uh, sort of politics that we play had to kick them out uh, uh, between the 1963 to 64 elections. And then, of course, it went on uh, uh, up until this uh, for democracy uh, uh, that we were able to, uh, you know, push away all those kind of things uh, that sh uh, so Supposed to serve as, you know, a, a sort of preservation for those candidates that, you know, the people love, but that, uh, you know, would be willing to be able to, you know, pass through a system that wouldn't stop them from uh, realizing their potentials. But nonetheless, uh, uh, what has uh, uh, kept us where we are is that, just like Obama has said when he visited Ghana. Uh, uh, he, he has said that he was cautioning us against building, uh, you know, big men. We should build, you know, big institutions, focus on institution building. But I, I don't know why it's difficult for us uh, to be able to build institutions. If you take a look at this reverse issue, for example, the APC issue in reverse, where is the process, the, the appeal panel that was supposed to have been set up by the national uh, uh, a body of, uh, of the party, the national headquarters of the APC, where was it? Because some of these checks and balances are put in place so as to prevent issues you know, ending up in court. You see in the constitutions of the political parties, they have it that before an issue will end up in court, it must have been resolved through the internal me uh, 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 mechanisms of, of the party. But we are not seeing the political parties at the national headquarters themselves standing up to challenge some of these big men. Look at what happened in Akwaibon, for example. How can APC not have a very strong uh, uh, Guba candidate in Akwaibon? It's depriving the people of an alternative from a big political party at the center to be able to fight at the fringe there. Look at some other political parties that are coming up. The issues of Labour Party, for example, yes, you raised some point, but you can see that even the Labour Party is having a problem between the national chairman and the youth leader in a, in a party that's supposed to be youth Focus that's supposed to show example. So we need to start strengthening our democracy to push away the big man syndrome so that, for example, in the Labour Party, we are not promoting an individual. Let's see how we reform the institution so that even after the 2023 elections, the party can become strengthened to be able to serve as a vehicle for winning elections in the right. future. Uh, Dr. Sam Amadi, let's give it to you. 30 seconds, you have the last word. Restoring supremacy of the political party. How can we achieve that? We can achieve by three ways. I, I hold I like responsible. The first is that the parties themselves, the electoral act has tried, but we should deepen the idea of democratic primaries. INEC, I have always argued, should have the right to first disqualify, to cancel, so that the courts will have less to do. I think INEC is trying, but it should walk up to the learning curve quick and discipline this party. The, the parties, and again, democracy is about it's a, a marketplace. Mm. The customers are the electorates. If, if party leaders misbehave, then they, we should use our votes to punish them. Again, you don't build politics, you know, from, uh, you know, package it, it's ground up. We make mistakes, we keep learning. What this tells us is that we are still far from democracy. Democracy is both an attitude, a normative framework, as well as a structural thing. If you can't get party management right, individual uh, independent candidates will not save us. We need to have parties that are strong, organized, and rule-based. If we don't have them, we can't have governments that are rule-based. That's why, look at the governors, imprisoning their opponents, left, right, center, doing reckless things, because if you can't run a party democratically, you just can't run government democratically. There well said. And that's a good place to leave it, both gentlemen. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam Amadi, Arise News Analyst, as well as our Director of News and Politics Editor, Somna Sambo. Always a delight to have both of you on the news. Oh.